before The Lord of the Rings was finished and published. J.R.R. Tolkien had made numerous trips to the west of Ireland, and these experiences he had of Irish culture definitely bled into the revisions he was making to The Lord of the Rings at the time. I got to talk about how Tolkien has influenced Final Fantasy in the past, but I haven't talked about any of his own influences yet. So this is going to be an exciting topic to talk about for me. Please subscribe. I upload Lord of the Rings content on this channel every single day. Thanks guys. Let's get on with the video. Although the Shire was mostly influenced by Tolkien's nostalgia for rural areas of Wales and England, Tolkien would often draw sketches or paint watercolor paintings of the Irish countryside, which definitely had an influence in the creation of the Shire, and likely grasslands that the Fellowship march on throughout Middle-earth. J.R.R. Tolkien made many stops at the Burden, in southwest Ireland. When Tolkien describes risen and rugged landscapes in his masterpiece, University of Ulster lecturer and Tolkien scholar, Dr. Liam Campbell, believes he is likely drawing from this very rocky landscape, I could see the burden being an influence on the rocky hellish landscape of mortar myself. It's amazing to see how far Tolkien went in the research department to make the Lord of the Rings. I'll admit until doing my own first-hand research for this channel that I really took Tolkien's extensive research for granted. Shame on me. Another place in Ireland that likely influenced Tolkien is the Cliffs of Moher. This great cliff is just off the edge of the burren. And if you add a couple of giant statues to this bad boy, you basically get the gates of Argonath. Tolkien was really good at picking out already jaw-dropping environments from real life and extending it through the tool of fantasy to make them even more awe-inspiring. Another big Irish influence on Tolkien was Celtic mythology, but probably not as big as you think. If you're watching this video, you probably already know. Tolkien loved mythology and was absurdly knowledgeable about it possibly even superhuman, but he actually claimed to dislike Celtic mythology. This is what he had to say when asked about Celtic influences on his work. Needless to say they are not Celtic. Neither are the tales. I do know Celtic things, many in their original languages Irish and Welsh, and feel for them a certain distaste, largely for their fundamental unreason. They have bright color, but are like a broken stained glass window reassembled without design. They are in fact mad. As your reader says. But I don't believe I am. That was pretty harsh. And if I'm being honest. I'm not the brightest crayon in the box. A lot of that went right over my head. So I delve into the dark depths of Reddit and found comments about how the English and the Irish didn't get along so much back in Tolkien's day. And also Tolkien's primary influence. Which was Norse mythology. Had a lot of written ancient text and references to pull from. While Celtic lore was mostly passed down orally, and seemed to imitate North Germanic folklore. In other words, Norse mythology was Coke. Celtic mythology was Pepsi in Tolkien's eyes. And although there was probably a lot of connections between Celtic folklore and the Lord of the Rings, it was likely because the myths were derived from, or just coincidentally similar, to Norse mythology. Still though, it is worth noting I also found articles pointing out the similarities between Celtic names and names in Mary Brandybuck's family tree. That's about all I could find. Regardless of the man the myth the legend J.R.R. Tolkien's opinion on Celtic mythology and Irish folklore. I think it's insanely fascinating. If you loved reading The Lord of the Rings, which I assume you do if you sat through this video, I highly recommend reading some books on Irish folklore. Fairy tales and Celtic mythology. It's truly some of the most incredible lore I have ever had the pleasure to read about. That's the video guys. Thanks for watching. If you know any connections I missed, let me know so I can make a part 2. Please subscribe. I upload the Lord of the Rings content every single day. Thanks guys. Wait guys. I'm a idiot. I forgot to mention the Twa, a de Danan. These are a race of demigods that came to Ireland in Celtic folklore. They are believed to be the influence of the elves of the Lord of the Rings. Although Tolkien denied Celtic influence, he supposedly told his son that these were the influence for the elves. That sounds pretty straightforward to me. The Wikipedia article says this. The Twa, the Dedanan are described as a supernatural race. Much like idealized humans. 
who are immune from aging and sickness, and who have powers of magic. The powers most often attributed to the Tuatha are control over the weather and the elements, and the ability to shapeshift themselves and other things. They are also said to control the fertility of the land. The tale de Gabale and T. Siddha says the first Gales had to establish friendship with the Tuath to before they could raise crops and herds. That sounds a lot like Tolkien elves. Okay for real this time. Bye guys. Please subscribe. Thanks.